Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk to you guys about Plex Media servers. More precisely, should you be choosing to use an old Mac Mini or a NAS media server as your perfect Plex Media server because there are advantages to both sides. Too many of you have been contacting us at NAS Compares and more to ask about whether it's worth buying a NAS as a perfect Plex Media server and therefore having all of your media readily accessible anywhere in the world and your network or should you be reusing an old Mac Mini you've seen knocking around or maybe a cheap one you've seen on Gumtree or eBay. Now you can pick up Mac Mini's 2015, 14 generation now for as little as two to 300 pounds. If you want to spend a little bit more, you can get some of the i5 more advanced versions. Now these devices do support Plex Media Server. You can install the application and then this NAS will be, I'm oh, sorry, this Mac Mini will then become a Plex Media Server for all of your uh, data for your home. Maybe you're already using one and you're pondering whether to make the switch to network attached storage. Well, I'm here to tell you that I genuinely believe that going for a NAS is a much, much better idea. Don't get me wrong, a Mac Mini as a Plex Media Server is hugely advantageous. Let's look at the advantages. One, the price is going to be lower for that hardware to start with. Two, unlike desktop PCs or when people reuse old laptops, this is not going to be an, you know, an unwieldy, uncomfortable and effectively inefficient Plex Media Server. Mac Minis are designed to be efficient in a number of ways and with great cooling systems inside, even though it's not supposed to be on for weeks or months at a time, it will stand the test of time for a great deal of time anyway. On top of that, the CPUs inside, like for like, when compared with network attached storage, arrive with much better CPUs. For example, if you wanted to try to use an i5 in most modern NAS servers, you will have to spend for an i5 at least £1,200 for a NAS with an i5 CPU. Whereas with a Mac Mini, you can pick that up at a fraction of that price. Now let's talk about the disadvantages of a Mac Mini, which inversely are of course the advantages of a NAS. Firstly, storage. A Mac Mini, even a more modern generation Mac Mini, will limit the amount of storage available to you from the get-go. For example, inside this Mac Mini here, this is a 2014 generation Mac Mini I believe, it has got a 2.5 inch hard drive inside and it's 500 gig. But 500 gig in the grand scheme of things, and particularly with modern media, is not a lot of space. And you will therefore have to utilize USB slots on the rear of the device and attach additional storage. For serious capacity, you will of course have to utilize external three and a half inch drives that require their own mains power. Moreover, you're gonna to have to make sure you use USB 3, otherwise the speed you'll get from those external drives over the cable and into the Plex Media server will not be sufficient to play back a lot of modern media. Now, a NAS doesn't have a number of these disadvantages. First and foremost, one of their biggest assets is of course, capacity. Most NASes arrive with at least two bays all the way up to 6, 8, 10, 12, 20 and up to 24 bays of storage. So storage is going to be nowhere near as limiting a factor as it will be with a Mac Mini. On top of that, unlike the Mac Mini with its two and a half inch drives, a NAS can take advantage for the most part of larger capacity drives such as the Iron Wolf NAS drive here, which is 14 terabytes in capacity. So even in this two bay QNAP here, which has a Celeron CPU compared with the i3 or i5 you find in most affordable conventional older Mac minis, it will still be able to store 28 terabytes of storage with two of these drives. In order to take advantage of that level of storage, you will need to buy an external case. You'll have to get at least one of these drives, uh, the larger drives, and of course, mains power for that device. Next advantage of NAS over Mac Mini is of course RAID. There's not much good cr creating a huge library of movies which as much as you want to say you don't care if you lose, it would still be the worst thing in the world if you lost it all. And a NAS of course has RAID functionality built into it. That means that once you populate this with one, two, three or fully populate it with drives, you can create a redundant array of independent disks that will create a safety net of storage. In real terms, in the case of say a large device like this, if you fully populated this with hard drives, with every wave of data, with every write of data on these drives, it will write on all but one of the drives and this one drive will then get a blueprint of the data from the other five. On the next wave of data, the blueprint will be put on a different drive. 
and then the wave on the other disc. So every wave, the blueprint hops to the next disc along. The result being that if one of your drives dies due to a mechanical failure, all your data can still be reconstructed from the remaining drives. Although RAID is a functionality available on Mac Minis that have one or more drives, it really isn't in any way reliable or comparable to this. And moreover, if you have external drives, you can have a very unstable RAID across external drives, trying to pair them with the internal storage. Now we've mentioned internal CPUs. Yes, the CPU in the Mac Mini is definitely better than that of the NAS. However, the CPUs in NAS are once again designed for efficiency rather than raw instant power. And in most cases, you will not take advantage of the power of that i3 or that i5. Only in scenarios where you may be edit, um, transcoding or changing a file in raw 4K will you see the advantage of those file, uh, of that CPU. So if, for example, you're, you own a copy of 4K high res H.264 codec version of a new movie and you want to watch it on your mobile phone, then transcoding may well be something you need to adopt in order to resize and reformat that file to be more acceptable to the destination device. But even in that scenario, the Mac Mini will not hold up very well and a lot of that is to do with transcoding engines. Plex doesn't always have access to the graphically altering um, properties of transcoding or the hardware transcoding engine on the CPU on a Mac Mini. There is better support of a number of NASs that provide hardware transcoding than they do on Mac Minis. And in the events of those files getting very, very large and getting very, very dense, transcoding can really be a factor. And in terms of future proofing, not only in storage, but in the ability to modify old and new files to work with the latest or oldest devices, transcoding is paramount and definitely a consideration. The last thing I want to talk about is to do with power over time and the degradation of that hardware. Once you have a device left on for weeks if not months at a time, factors such as dust, heat and general you know, wear and tear do play their part. And parts that aren't designed for efficiency which, for example, the Mac Mini is not, will degrade greatly over time. So the RAM and the CPU and everything inside this Mac Mini is surrounded by some great engineering that's been built into it to withstand use over great lengths of time and very, very busy short lengths of time. But nothing compared with a NAS, because a NAS is designed to literally be on for weeks, months, and in some cases, years without being powered down. In fact, in the case of some WD NASs, you can't actually turn them off. All you can do is put them into hibernation or reboot them. And that's because these devices are designed for the long haul. And if you're gonna have a Plex Media server tucked away in a shelf or a cupboard somewhere, you're not gonna to want to interact with it that much. Now, the last thing, I said the last point was the last point, but I'm gonna give you a little extra thing here. And that's to do with more than Plex. A Mac Mini that's being utilized for a Plex Media server, if you are going to be the sort of person that stores this away in the attic, in a cupboard, whatever, you're going to find it very difficult to take advantage of any of the other hardware properties of this device. In order to take advantage of a, a Mac Mini's other functionality, you're going to have to do one of two things. One, have a KeyVM setup, keyboard, video, mouse, and what that will do is then let you interact with the devices you would a PC. But that, of course, is going to require a lot more mains powered monitors and keyboard. It's just a huge enterprise. Secondly, you can try to access it remotely via means such as TeamViewer, which, of course, you'll have to pay for a subscription if you're not going to you know, use it in the freeware version. Or you're going to have to pay for a DDNS, that is, in caveman speak, the ability to interact with a device over the Internet as if you were on the network, basically outside access to a device on your inside network. You'll have to pay or use a slightly questionable free version of DDNS, which isn't as stable as you'd like. And NAS arrives with that functionality in the example of CloudStation, uh, CloudStation with Synology, and um, my QNAP Cloud with QNAP. You can access these devices via your network and via the internet as if it was locally. And in terms of Plex Media Server, that's enormously advantageous. But more than that, it means that you can run a host of other applications and maximize your investment, such as virtual machines, large-scale backups, DLNA, DLNA media server support, iTunes server support, 
and more. All of that, and surveillance, of course, I nearly forgot, adding IP cameras to your network. These are things that are possible on a Mac Mini being used as a Plex Media server, but certainly nowhere near as proficiently and easily as a NAS. When you pay extra for the NAS, what you're, not, what you're paying for isn't the hardware, it's for the versatility and ease of setup. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this. Don't forget this channel isn't supported by Patreons or uh, PayPal donations. This, pay, this channel is supported by your contributions. So if you have enjoyed this video, then do click like and subscribe to let me know that you've enjoyed it and keeps me making more videos to help you. Thank you so much for watching.